I think we can start. Hello, everyone. I am Alberto Garcia Garcia. I am one of the professors of the Master on Quantum Computing in the University Polytechnic of Madrid. Uh, well, we have the really, really, really desire to, to have here with us to Borja Menendez, that is the Quantum Computing Lead of Optimization Problems in Fujitsu, Spain, here. And well, Borja, thank you very, very much for attending that. For us, it's a great pleasure to have you here. I think that is going to be a very, very interesting session. And yeah, just I can just tell you what I really thanks for, for that. Okay, thank you very much. It's also a pleasure for me uh, to be here uh, with all of you, uh, trying to share our knowledge in, in Fujitsu. Okay, so I will start uh, while sharing my screen. Um, now I'll up to you. Thank you very much, Borja. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, I don't know if you can see my screen. Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let me introduce myself just uh, in a brief way. Uh, as Alberto said, uh, I'm Borja. My name is Borja, and I'm PhD in Operation Research. I work for Fujitsu for the Center of Excellence in Advanced Analytics or Data Intelligence, that is. Uh, right now, um, and yes, I lead the, the, the quantum practice or the optimization practice around quantum inspired optimization. Okay, and today I'm going to talk about uh, our work with Digital Annealer. Uh, you will uh, meet Digital Annealer if, if you haven't yet, and, and see what are the kind of problems that we can solve with Digital Annealer and uh, our results with, with them. Okay. So, uh, first of all, what do startups, big companies, and research labs have in common? Well, uh, of course, we are here in a, in a Master of Quantum Computing, so uh, the answer is very clear, quantum computing, right? Uh, this sentence is from the MIT professor Isaac Schwann, and I think is uh, one of the um, sentences that, that uh, define uh, in, a, in a very good, in, in a very accurate way, uh, quantum computing, uh, because uh, it is no longer a physicist's dream, it's an engineer's nightmare, <laughs> and, and that's the thing. And why is that? Uh, that's, where, that's because uh, quantum computing comes with uh, a lot of challenges, as you can also uh, see in the, in the master, I, I, I can guess, uh, because it's very, well, the quantum computing is, is a very new um, uh, computing paradigm, and it's uh, very difficult to uh, to have it working because of the stability for the requirement of isolation from magnetic magnetic fields, for example, or the complex infrastructure uh, around the um, the temperature. Okay, so the thing is that quantum computing is not ready to solve. Um, uh, industrial applications. Okay, uh, this is the this, this is the thing. This uh, this kind of, of computation is not ready yet for the um, uh, for big problems. And if you ask uh, Google quantum computing will, uh, the first two sentences that that it will uh, follow this uh, will be never work or change the world. So maybe quantum computing itself is in a superposition of states, right? <laughs> uh, we will we don't know exactly um, uh, well the, the implications of using uh, quantum computers. Maybe in the future, but we don't know exactly when will they come to to solve all our problems, right? This is the one of the main questions I I can say in in the quantum computing industry. So the thing is that uh, with this uh, Gartner hype cycle that we maybe all of us uh, have seen uh, sometime, uh, we can see that quantum computing is uh, going into the ladder in the in the peak of inflated expectations. Uh, but maybe uh, we can uh, do something like this uh, um, and and say that quantum inspired uh, computing. Uh, can can achieve good results in order to solve uh, some of the of the interesting problems in this industry, and that's why Fujitsu uh, developed Digital Annealer. 
uh, digital annealer is uh, a quantum inspired hardware that delivers great performance okay without the, the this cost and, and and complexes from the uh, quantum uh, computing side okay so the digital annealer is an, an ASIC an application specific uh, integrated circuit uh, that runs on almost every server and high, uh, has a high precision and accuracy uh, avoids the complexity uh, and cost of the of the quantum computing uh, of the quantum computers uh, it runs a lot faster than than standard computers and and of course it works in at room temperature that is a, a good i think advance here because um uh, we can run it uh, everywhere okay so uh this is the um the hardware from fujitsu digital annealer that uh, is able to to solve in a very efficient way uh, optimization problems okay the thing is that digital annealer works uh, in a similar way as, as quantum computers, or at least uh, the quantum annealers part. Okay, so uh, digital annealer is able to, to solve this kind of optimization problems or combinatorial optimization problems in a, in a very efficient way. Okay, digital annealer is inspired by uh, the three main components of, of uh, the quantum computers that are the superposition of states, the quantum tunneling, and, and entanglement. So first of all, in the superposition, um, since digital annealer is a, is a circuit and, and, and is an, an ASIC and a specific circuit for, for solving this kind of optimization problems, uh, we can get a parallel speed up because we run uh, several uh, samples of our solution to the problem. And, and in this uh, way, we can more or less uh, be inspired by superposition or, or try to uh, to be as, um, as as similar enough to, to superposition okay so so in this case we are running like almost no well not almost at most uh, 128 uh, uh, parallel replications so far of the solution to the problem so this way uh, we are simulating this flip of states uh, in in the superposition part of the of the quantum computers. Okay. Uh, the second uh, way that is inspired by uh, quantum computer uh, is quantum tunneling. In a uh, sorry, I'm going to put the yeah this. Okay, so uh, in this second part. Uh, we can see the, the search space in, a, in an optimization problem in which uh, we all want to reach this global minimum that will be uh, the best solution, the best possible solution for our problem. And the thing is that uh, what do we do when we get into a local minimum in order to escape from it and get the, lo the global minimum, okay? So in a classical environment, what we need to do is uh, from uh, going from A to C uh, passing by B, right? Uh, but in, in in the quantum computing paradigm, uh, we can avoid this and try to go from A to C directly thanks to the, the quantum tunneling effect, right? So with digital annealer, what we do is um, increase the probability of escaping from this local minimum, okay, in order to get this global minimum. Of course, uh, the thing is that uh, we need to to pass through B. This is the uh, the way to go in a in a classical environment, and, and digital annealer is, is a classical circuit. But uh, the thing is that we um, escape from this in a very efficient way thanks to the, the the algorithm that runs on digital annealer. And for the entanglement part, uh, what we can see is that. Uh, we have a device that has several uh, bits, in this case, uh, 8,192 uh, bits, okay? And uh, they are all connected to each other. So uh, the entanglement is, is a fully entanglement environment, okay? Or uh, at least as similar as, as possible to a, to a quantum computer um, uh, device in this case, okay? So uh, we do not have the the counterparts of uh, getting the embeddings from uh, other architectures and that, and that kind of things because uh, all of the bits are connected to each other 
So digital annealer started as a, in, in its first generation as a device, a hardware device uh, that ran in, on, on the cloud uh, with just uh, 1,024 bits, okay? Uh, this started as an FPGA and, and then developed into an ASIC, uh, an application-specific integrated circuit with full interconnection and 16-bit precision, okay? But uh, after a while, uh, we got the second generation, that is the digital annealer unit that is able to handle up to 8,192 8, bits with full interconnection also, and up to 64-bit precision, okay? The digital annealer could run on, uh, on, on, on cloud, but also uh, on-premise, okay? We will see uh, uh, maybe in the future some some uh, implementation of on-premise, but the, the, the main goal of, of using digital annealer is on cloud, okay? And the third generation that is coming right now um, uh, relies on a large scale parallel processing, okay? And, and uh, is able to handle uh, like 100 uh, kilobit scale, okay? So 100,000 uh, bits with also full interconnection uh, between the bits and up to 64 bit precision also. So this is a, a good news. Right now, um, also the, the uh, we are testing um, uh, some uh, new improvements on this, uh, and I hope that maybe in the near future we can share with all of you uh, some improvements on this third generation. So how does it work, or how do we work with digital annealer in a regular way with uh, companies while trying to solve their optimization problems. So first of all, what we need to do is identify the problem, okay? So uh, this is answering the question, what is the problem that we are trying to solve, of course, okay? So first of all, we need to assess the problem and uh, get the, the, uh, the objective function uh, of, the, of the optimization problem, but also uh, the constraints, okay? So maybe uh, like in this picture, if we are trying to solve the traveling salesperson problem, what we need to do is um, uh, to get what is the, the, the objective function. In this case is uh, minimizing the distance between all the points that we need to, to cover in, in our way. Okay, and the constraints for the problem. So for instance, uh, we cannot get uh, two points at the same time or um, uh, passing twice or more than twice uh, uh, from uh, for one point, okay? So this is the, the thing that we need to do uh, in this first part, okay? After that, what we need to do is to map the problem. So uh, getting that objective function and, and getting the, uh, those uh, constraints of the problem and trying to uh, get it into a, a Cubo model, okay? The, the Cubo model is a quadratic unbounded binary optimization model uh, that works like, like this one. This is like the, the icing model, okay? So in this case, uh, what we have is the, um, the energy function of, of our problem. And what we need to do is to minimize this function. Uh, in this case, what we have is uh, several uh, variables that are uh, Boolean or yeah, uh, true or false uh, variables that uh, digital annealer need to select uh, to be or not uh, into the solution of our problem, okay? And, and well, uh, when, once we have the, the problem mapped into a Cubo model, uh, we code it in, in, in this case in Python, okay, with, uh, because we have an, an SDK to, uh, to map this, this problem into, into the Cubo model, and then send it uh, to the digital annealer platform, okay? Uh, the digital annealer, annealer platform, as, as we have seen, uh, runs on, on the cloud, and the thing is that we need to send them send it uh, uh, the model uh, with, the, um, with the parameters that, uh, well, the, 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 the hyper parameters that, that uh, runs digital annealer. And uh, digital annealer solve, solves the problem and then uh, we can retrieve a solution to the problem, okay? So the main part 
uh, or the main parts are the second and the third one. Okay, the, the mapping the problem uh, into a Cubo model and then run it on digital and another platform. Okay, so this is uh, like the the full stack uh, of of digital annealer from the more uh, general way to to the more specific one. So uh, we have this. Uh, digital annealer development kit that is written in Python and, and we can translate this objective function and, and, and constraints to the problem into, into a very specific uh, um, uh, Python uh, file, okay? And then uh, we need to call the, uh, the, um, uh, the digital annealer uh, through the REST API, okay? And then run it on digital annealer and retrieve the, the information. So, what does digital annealer implement? In this case, in a, in a high level, uh, what we can see is the, the quantum, annealer, uh, quantum annealing uh, methodology, okay? That relies, of course, in a, in a meta heuristic from the early 80s that, that is um, the simulated annealing, okay? So in this case, the uh, annealing process is a thermodynamic process in which uh, we have at first a high temperature and this temperature decreases with time. And uh, what we can see is that at the minimum temperature, uh, the system is in a more stable way uh, of working. So what we need to achieve is in that process, uh, getting that minimum uh, temperature that relies like in, a, in, a, in an optimized way of, of, of uh, the solution of our problem, okay? So uh, while we are decreasing this temperature, what we are doing is to reducing uh, the probability of escaping from this local minimum because uh, as time increases, um, it is supposed to be, the solution is supposed to be in a more stable um, way. So we are achieving this global minimum that we want for our, for our optimization problem. And in this case, at the beginning of the process, uh, what we need to do is uh, escape from this local minimum as fast as, as possible. Okay, so the the case in in this case uh, the solution is evolving. Okay, and what we need to get is this uh, global minimum from uh, for this function. Okay, so uh, we are doing movements uh, throughout the search space in in which uh, if the movement is um, uh, gets a better solution. Uh, we accept it, okay? And if not, if, it, if it's worse, uh, we accept the movement with some probability. And this is the, the probabil probability that we are, uh, that uh, I was uh, talking about. Um, at first, uh, we will accept these worse uh, movements uh, with a higher probability uh, than at the end of the process, okay? And in a low level, uh, since digital annealer is a hardware platform, okay, that, that is um, uh, relying on, on an ASIC, what we do is uh, selecting uh, some bits uh, in order to satisfy the, the acceptance criterion, okay? So uh, we run like two processes, uh, the trial and, and update processes. And at first, what we do is uh, inverting uh, several bits uh, since we are running uh, a parallel computation with uh, at most 128 uh, different solutions. So we are trying to uh, invert in bits uh, in order to get uh, a, new, a new solution to our problem, okay? That will be the acceptance criterion. So the bit that um, minimizes the most uh, the, um, the the solution value for uh, for our current solution uh, will be selected for the next uh, iteration process. Okay, so uh, this is the way that really uh, that digital annealer works: um, inverting bits uh, uh, with with the uh, with the meta heuristic that we have seen before, and uh, trying to get that solution that minimizes uh, the the energy the, the the energy function. Okay. Okay. So this is how digital annealer works. But uh, we need to do, to see uh, what kind of problems we can we can solve with digital annealer. Okay. And in this 
uh, way, we have uh, been working with three different scenarios. Uh, the first one uh, starting by startups, okay, then big companies, and then uh, research projects. So first of all, uh, we started a collaboration uh, some months ago with Quantum Match. Quantum Match is a startup from the Basque Country at the north of Spain, and and they are uh, developing uh, several uh, algorithms for for finance. Uh, in this case, we are working in two different projects, but I'm sure we will increase the, the, the number of projects with them. So first of all is Q-Allocate, that is uh, an online portfolio selection algorithm uh, for, for uh, optimizing the, the, the portfolio of assets. So, okay, so given a, a set of assets, uh, we need to, uh, to take into consideration uh, several of them and, and apply some weights uh, to uh, to them in order to maximize our profit. Okay, I'm not going into details uh, in this branch in in Q Allocate because we will see uh, several examples of them with with the big corporations part. So uh, we are also running uh, another another project that is Q, Q, Q Crypto uh, that will find arbitrage opportunities. Uh, throughout the cryptocurrency uh, markets, okay? So in this case, uh, what we have is uh, like these uh, nodes and, and this graph, okay, that represents uh, um, currencies in the, in the nodes and the relationship between them, okay? So in this case, what we have here is uh, how much do we need to pay for going from uh, the Japanese currency to the Chinese currency and uh, other currencies like the Euro or the Canadian uh, dollars or the US dollars, okay? So what we have here is a lot of uh, communication between the, the currencies because uh, we can um, go from one to another and 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 well, this is the like the the main picture. Okay, the ideas are based on the on on this paper that we can see here, and uh, they propose two different models uh, in order to get some profit from here. Okay, so the first approach is an edge-based model in which what we uh, what we have uh, is the uh, as our as our binary variables uh, the uh, the edges of the of the graph model, okay? So in this case, uh, what we need to do is to maximize this, um, this formula that says that we need to maximize uh, uh, our, our profits here, okay? So uh, what we need to, to select is those uh, edges in the graph that maximize the, uh, the benefits. With some, uh, of course, with some, um, uh, constraints to the to the problem. In this case, the the, the first uh, constraint is that um, one uh, currency uh, cannot uh, be uh, the source and 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 also the uh, I will say it. Uh, well, I we cannot go uh, for instance from a Japanese yen uh, to another. Um, uh, currency, but also going from uh, another currency to Japanese uh, yen uh, several times. Okay, so what we need to assess is that uh, outputs from a currency are in in, in the number are, are exactly the same as the as the inputs from that currency. Okay, and the other uh, of the um, of the constraints are that. Um, uh, we cannot go from one currency to several of them. We just uh, can pass through one currency once in 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 our in our way. Okay, so this is like uh, finding the 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 optimal uh, the optimal distance from the the traveling salesman uh, problem, more or less. So in the second approach, uh, what we need. Uh, to assess is the is a node-based model. Okay, in this no, node-based model, uh, instead of having um, uh, the edges of the of the um, uh, of the graph as the binary variables, what we have 
uh, is the uh, uh, the nodes. Okay. So in this case, uh, we can see that we are uh, multiplying uh, several nodes to to get the the profit, and uh, we have several constraints. So the first of all is that uh, we cannot uh, go from uh, one currency to um, another in several times. Okay, so if we are uh, changing dollars to euros uh, uh, in the first uh, in the first movement, uh, we cannot do the same uh, in the second or the third mo movement. Okay, so we cannot select uh, several times uh, the same uh, currency. Uh, the second part is uh, more or less the opposite. So uh, what we need to assess is that uh, uh, we cannot um, uh, we cannot uh, be at the same time uh, in two different uh, currencies, and uh, of course we need to assess that uh, uh, we cannot go uh, we cannot pass through through a currency more than once. Okay, so. These two approaches are uh, more or less uh, similar uh, in order to solve the, 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 the arbitrage problem, okay? So this is something that we are working with um, with Quantum Maths, as we have seen, that is a, a, a startup, but we also collaborated and, and are collaborating with big companies, okay? So uh, for instance, going to portfolio optimization, uh, we have worked with uh, with two different problems. Okay, so the first one uh, would be at the at the left of this slide. That is the the portfolio optimization that relies on the minimum variance. In this case, what we need to um, uh, to get is the uh, the a strategy that selects the weights for the assets in a portfolio that maximize uh, the benefits. Okay trying to uh, minimize the uh, the risk of the of the portfolio so in this case uh, we have working uh, with with natquest that is a, a, a scotland based uh, bank okay and we could see that that seeing uh, that following this approach uh, we could run this algorithm uh, 300 times faster than, than traditional com uh, computing with a with a higher degree of accuracy. Okay, so NatWest is uh, uh, of course very happy with this solution and uh, trying to put this uh, into into production. Here in Spain, uh, we work with uh, BBVA in 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 a similar pro problem related to um, uh, to portfolio optimization. In this case. Uh, we based our approach uh, to a, a hierarchical risk parity in which uh, the, por the portfolio needs to be uh, more or less balanced, okay, in order to, to be resistant uh, to, uh, uh, to several things that, we, that can happen in, in, a, in a market, okay. So the thing is that uh, uh, we need to, to get some assets into into our portfolio uh, in order to, to be more stable, such as, as, as we can see this uh, in this picture, that following uh, the minimum variance optimization, that could be the, the first one that we talked before, uh, maybe with, with some crashes, uh, we can see that the, the price of our, of our, or the value of, the, of our portfolio uh, going down and, and with a, a hierarchical risk parity uh, method, we, maybe we can stabilize the, uh, this, and maybe we cannot get uh, the same results in 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 the in the return part. But maybe uh, we minimize the risk, uh, trying to to having a more di uh, diverse portfolio. Okay. And well, we have. Uh, talked about uh, startups, big companies, but uh, we are also collaborating with uh, research labs. Okay, so in this case, uh, we have working uh, in trying to accelerate drug discovery. In this case, uh, we will see that this uh, drug repurposing in, instead of drug, drug discovery. But the drug discovery process, or, or a traditional drug discovery process. Uh, takes uh, a lot of years, uh, normally uh, more than 10 years, okay? So in this very long um, uh, process, 
what we have at the beginning is uh, trying to uh, to identify the the disease target okay and and then trying to characterize them so so following some steps on our um, on our process what we can achieve is a, a is a drug uh, in order to fight the um, uh, the disease okay so this is a, a very traditional way of doing uh, this uh, drug discovery process. But the thing is that we can shorten this this time, okay? Um, maybe if we attack this part, uh, trying to uh, design and, and optimize this uh, this process, uh, we can shorten uh, the, the total time of, of going to the market with a new drug for, for a disease, okay? So this is the case for uh, a collaboration that we have from uh, United Kingdom with uh, uh, with uh, a company from North Carolina. And uh, of course, uh, what we need to, to assess here is getting uh, new drugs for, for a new disease, okay. But here from Spain, we have collaborated with uh, the King's College of, um, uh, of London uh, in the case of uh, trying to repurpose uh, drugs. So in this case, uh, what we need to do is uh, trying to identify those drugs that are being used for another disease right now and uh, trying to use it for a new disease, like in this case, the COVID-19, okay? So uh, for this purpose, uh, we partnered with the School of Immunology and Microbial Sciences from the King's College London. And we can see here part of the of the team, okay. And uh, in our collaboration, uh, uh, we um, needed to uh, to find at least one drug, uh, okay, to to fight COVID nineteen. So in this case, uh, we need to why, uh, what we need to do is getting some uh, of the repurpose. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, getting some uh, molecules that could be. Uh, a good a good molecule to uh, to fight the COVID-19, but maybe uh, they have some properties that are not desired for humans, okay? And um, trying to see if that molecule is similar enough to another molecules that are approved by the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, okay? So um, uh, in order to to get uh, some molecule that is similar uh, that is similar enough to to the first one. Um, uh, with some properties that that maybe are desired for 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 humans uh, in this case, okay. So in a in a very basic way, what we do is getting one molecule and getting another molecule and uh, translating those molecules, okay, and, and modeling those model molecules as graphs, okay, in such a way that nodes of of these graphs are the atoms and the edges of the graphs are the bonds. Uh, from those uh, atoms in the molecule. We can see here that uh, maybe this node is representing not an atom, but a, a set of atoms like these ones, okay? Uh, uh, this node is representing this uh, cycle of atoms. This other node uh, is representing uh, this other cycle of, of, of atoms and, and, and the same goes for, for this node, okay? And, and in this case, uh, we are uh, bonding each other as if they were just an atom. And why is that? Because uh, these structures are, are uh, very pow powerful and, and they are very difficult to, to break into uh, in the nature, okay? So uh, this is a simplification of the, of, the, um, of the molecules and this is a good simplification uh, um, uh, in order to, to solve the problem, okay? The same goes for the second molecule. We can see these cycles uh, that are uh, represented by just one node, okay? And when we have these graphs, uh, what we need to do is to build a conflict graph, okay? This conflict graph have, um, uh, has several uh, parts of this uh, molecule, several, uh, well, some, some information about these molecules. And each of the nodes of the conflict graph, what represents uh, is the, um, well, the, the, like the union of one node 
to another one in the second molecule. Okay, we will see the details uh, in, in the next slide. So when we have this conflict graph, what we need to do is to solve an optimization problem, an optimization problem, sorry, uh, that is the maximum weighted independent set, okay? So having this, uh, this graph that we, uh, in which we store several information about two different nodes uh, of the of the original of the original graphs, okay, in, in, in each of these of these nodes, and several relations between them. What we need to get are the nodes that are um, that maximizes a weight, okay, and are uh, independent from each other. So in this case, uh, that would be the case for uh, for these two nodes, uh, this of the node, this on of the node, and this of the node, okay, that will represent. Uh, these five nodes in, in in each graph, okay? And when we have this solution, what we need to do is the uh, the inverse uh, uh, the inverse problem, okay? So so what we need to to get is uh, what are the the real atoms that are similar enough in in each of the molecules, okay? So going into more detail, uh, what we do is uh, having this molecule, sorry. Uh, having this molecule that have uh, several properties, okay, like um, this is an, uh, an hydrogen acceptor or donor, or this is aromatic, or this is hydrophobe, uh, whatever the, uh, the characteristics uh, or the features that they have, okay. We need first uh, get the molecular graph representation, like in here uh, and, and as we have seen before, right? So how do we uh, build this, this conflict graph? Well, uh, what we need to do is to get mm, different uh, features of, the, of, the, of each of the nodes here and put it into a graph, okay? So in this case, uh, for example, we have this uh, first graph uh, for uh, representing a, a, a molecule and this second graph representing the second molecule. So in this case, um, we are saying that this node, that is V1, uh, have a, a label uh, having several features, okay? Uh, feature one and feature two, and this node uh, have the feature three and feature four, okay? And the same goes for uh, the second graph. In the second graph, what we have uh, are the labels for uh, each of the nodes, and we have several features for them. So, for instance, uh, we can see that uh, the labels of the of the V1, the node V1, are uh, exactly the same as the uh, labels uh, at the, at, as the label of of uh, the node VA. Okay, because they have exactly the same features. So, uh, having said this, we can see that uh, we are uh, getting this uh, um, this node, okay, representing that V1 and VA could be exactly the same atom or exactly the same node in in our graphs, okay. So we will follow uh, this um, this approach for every node. So, for instance, if we get the the node V1 from the graph G1 and the node VB from the graph G2, what we can see is that uh, the features are more or less similar because they share the feature one, right? Uh, in, the, in the case of the node V1, uh, it has the feature one and two, and the, in, in the case of the node VB, uh, it has the, the feature uh, one and three, okay? So they are more or less similar. Since they are more or less similar, we can uh, put it into, into a node, okay, in, in the conflict graph. So we will follow this, um, this process to build the conflict graph, okay? Maybe uh, we can see that, um, that we have built, uh, for example, uh, the, the V1 VA, V1 VB, and V1 uh, VC, because uh, they are similar enough. Okay, but uh, we uh, have not uh, have not added to the to the conflict graph the pair uh, V2 VA, and and why is that? Because uh, the label for for V2 and VA 
are not similar enough. Uh, in fact, they are not similar uh, because uh, the label for uh, V2 is uh, contains the feature three and four, while uh, the label for uh, VA contains the feature uh, one and two. So uh, they are not similar enough uh, in order to put it into a node of the graph. Okay. So having the nodes, how can we connect them? How can we add the um, the arcs, okay, for the uh, for the conflict graph? So in this case, uh, when what we need to to put in the into the into the arcs uh, is information about they are about, about nodes that are not um, good enough to be in the solution, okay? So for instance, in this case. Um, we cannot put into the into the solution this node with this node or uh, with all the node. And why is that? Because in this case and in this case, we have exactly uh, the same node for uh, in the information uh, of the original uh, molecules, okay, or the original graphs. So in this case, uh, we are saying that V1 is similar enough to VA, and at the same time, V1 is similar to VB. So this is not possible. V1 is similar to VA or V1 is similar to VB, but uh, they cannot be uh, at the same time uh, a solution for our problem, okay? The same goes for, for this node. And that's why we are adding uh, uh, these edges, okay? In the case that um, uh, like, like the V1 VA node and, and V2 VC node, what we have saying here is that V1 is similar enough to VA, okay? As well as V2 is similar to VC, that maybe that's the case because uh, V2 uh, have the, the features uh, three and four while the VC have the, the features uh, two and four. But in this case, uh, we are adding some other information that is the distance between the atoms or, or in this case, the nodes, okay? So the distance, uh, between uh, these two nodes are different from the distance, or is different from the distance uh, of these two nodes. So in that case, we are adding this uh, edge, edge uh, uh, for the molecule, okay, for the conflict graph. This is uh, not exactly the same uh, that goes for the for this node and, and this other node, because in this node and this other node, what we are doing is saying, uh, well, V1 is uh, similar to VA in the same way as V2 is similar to VB. And maybe this is the case. And why is that? Because V1 is similar to VA, okay? V2 is similar also to VB. And the distance between V1 and V2 and VA and VB is uh, in this case ex exactly the same. So what we want is that these two nodes are in the solution. Since we are solving the maximum weight independent set, uh, we would select this node and this node for the solution because they are uh, independent. And in this case, uh, they would uh, maximize the, the weight, okay? Well, uh, I've been talking about maximizing the weight, but of course, digital annealer uh, uh, just solve minimization problems. It's as easy as as uh, just getting the um, uh, the signs uh, in in an inverse way. So in this case, for the uh, objective function that is maximizing the weight, uh, we would put a minus here. And for the connections of the nodes, uh, we would put a a, a a sum here. Okay, and and in this way, we are minimizing this function. After that, after, the, um, after letting digital annealer to solve this problem, uh, what we need to do is to get the um, uh, a value of, of similarity, right? Be, uh, between the two graphs that we are comparing. So for the graph G1 and G2, uh, what we need to do is getting uh, some information about it. So in this case, uh, with the node uh, VC as the, um, well, v, V1C and V2C uh, as the um, nodes, the vertices or the nodes that are in the conflict graph that belongs to the first 
graph and to the second graph, okay? So what we have to do is to get the information about uh, what are the, the relative number between uh, these nodes that are similar uh, between the two molecules or the two graphs uh, relative to the graph itself, okay? Here we have two uh, ways of, of doing this because we have two uh, molecules and these two molecules could be of uh, different sizes. So they have different uh, number of atoms. And uh, what we need to, to get is the, the maximum and the minimum value of this similarity uh, regarding the, the position that we see because it's not the same uh, to see the, the similarity between the, the first graph to the second or the second to the one to the first one okay and what we can do is to to get an average or something like an average between the maximum value or, or the minimum value okay this is controlled by the delta value that is uh, um, a value between zero and one and if the value of delta is uh, closer to, to one we would select more the or or give more weight uh, to the maximum value of similarity, while um, while if the delta value is um, more or closer to to zero, uh, would be closer to the to the minimum value of similarity. Okay. So what we did are several computational experiments that will be published. In, in a paper in uh, well soon in, in several weeks okay so first of all uh, what we got uh, were uh, different pairs of molecules uh, annotated by by some experts that said if the molecules were similar enough or not okay so what we said uh, was okay so if this expert said that this uh, well or or 72% of the experts said that uh, these two molecules are similar enough. We would say that these molecules are similar uh, with a value of, of 72%, okay? And this goes for every pair of molecules. Thus, we tested some, the influence of some parameters like the similarity value between two vertices or, or the similarity threshold between uh, those uh, two uh, different uh, nodes of the of the graphs. Okay, so maybe we could only accept uh, adding um, a new node to the to the conflict graph just in case uh, uh, it it is a, the similarity between uh, these two nodes are uh, uh, higher enough. Okay, and the weight added to the to the similar to the similarity of the edges. So after taking these preliminary experiments, what we did is, uh, well, test the influence of this and, and parameterize the, uh, the algorithm. And after that, what we did is getting the, the FDA approved uh, uh, drugs, okay? That is comprised of more than 11,000 compounds. And we test some targets. Uh, uh, against these these compounds, okay. So in this case, what we get is the similarity between uh, a target and the set of molecules. Uh, the target could be uh, maybe the Remdesivir that uh, maybe you heard of uh, because uh, uh, the Remdesivir was very very famous because uh, uh, maybe it could it could help uh, uh, fighting the, the COVID nineteen, okay, but uh, the secondary effects of, of Remdesivir were not good enough for humans, okay? So the thing is, um, uh, we need to, to find all the molecules, okay, for this. And uh, we compared the results uh, also to uh, another classical uh, algorithm that relies on a fingerprint method that is a 2D representation of the molecule instead of a, a 3D representation with the structure of the, of the molecule, okay? And the Tanimoto method, that is the, the similarity method of the um, uh, of measuring this this the similarity between the samples. Okay, so we got a different distribution of similarity. Uh, so the results are not directly uh, comparable, but uh, the thing is that the results of these uh, computational experiments uh, would be 
um, and, and in fact uh, have been tested on on the lab from the King's College London. Okay, the thing is that the the, the specific results uh, uh, would be published in in a paper in the in the next few weeks, so so you could see um, the results of it. Okay, and uh, this is an example of of an output of the algorithm. If we are testing the uh, uprifosbuvir, that is a, a molecule, an approved molecule by the FDA, against the randesivir, what we can see is the representation of the of the molecules, and we can see that the magenta part of the molecules are the the similar part of the of them. Okay, so if we rotate uh, this enough. Uh, we can see that the the structure is exactly the same. Okay, and this is um, the ideal case. Okay, this is the the ideal case. In this case, uh, we can see the the similarity that uh, since the oprifosbuvir is uh, a smaller molecule than rentesivir, uh, the thing is that the similarity value increases. Okay, this is a seventy percent uh, value of similarity for the oprifosbuvir. And for the render CVD, 60%. So we need to um, uh, play with the with the delta value in order to to get this, uh, a similarity value between the the two molecules. And in this case, uh, we took the 0 0.5, uh, meaning that we are averaging the maximum and minimum value for the similarities. Okay, so this is a 65% in this case. Okay, so maybe we can see a practical example because we Sorry, uh, we built uh, uh, we built a, a, a web example, okay, a web application, and in this case uh, we can we can see uh, that we are putting here uh, several uh, target molecules, okay, like the randesivir or the furin inhibitor or favipiravir. In this case, uh, they are just a few uh, because. Uh, this process takes a, a, a lot of time uh, since we are comparing uh, each of these targets um, uh, with each of the molecules in the in the data set that, that is comprised of the of the more than 11,000 compounds from the FDA approved okay and uh, here uh, we can put some uh, molecules and, and running okay and, and run them uh, in order to see the results. So, uh, well, uh, here are uh, some of them, uh, just as an example, okay? We can um, select the, the, the value for delta and maybe filter the, those molecules that are uh, just above the 50% uh, uh, of similarity, okay? And when we press the start comparing button, uh, Sorry, uh, Borja. Yeah. I think uh, we are still seeing the PowerPoint. No. Ah, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay. So, sorry, sorry. Um, so, how can I share my screen um, with this? Uh, I don't know. Maybe if you stop sharing screen and start again. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Sorry, sorry. And share my screen. Okay, do you see the Chrome? Web yes, browser? now we yes. Thank okay, you, okay. okay, sorry, sorry. I, I, I was explaining the, the, the uh, this part. Okay, so we are selecting here uh, the target molecules. In this case, uh, we have uh, only six compounds that are these three that I already selected and, and these other three, okay. But uh, this is just up to the um, to the researcher. And in this case, uh, in this box, we are selecting the compounds or uh, from the molecules, uh, the data set of molecules that we are uh, trying to, to compare these targets, okay. So in this case, I selected the sophosbuvir, the acetyl hexapeptide 3 and the timopentin here. We can play with the delta value uh, in order to see the results of similarity and um, uh, filter the molecules depending on the on the percentage of the of the similarity. So uh, in this case, uh, we won't see uh, 
uh, results that are um, under 50% of similarity, okay? And after pressing the start comparing button that I will not press again, but uh, that I've <laughs> pressed before, um, uh, this, this starts the, the, um, the running process that we have seen before. So what we take is the, uh, the graph representation of the molecules uh, from the uh, from the targets and the graph representation of the of the molecules from the from the compounds that we are uh, comparing with okay and and then uh, we compare uh, each of the possible pairs here so the remdesivir against these three compounds the furin inhibitor against these three compounds and the favipiravir against these three compounds also okay so um, we can see the the results here so at first we are uh, comparing the Rendesivir uh, versus the Sophosbuvir, and in this case we can see that the minimum similarity value is uh, roughly 60% and the maximum value is roughly 70%. So uh, the, what we uh, have named delta similarity, so the, the similarity uh, that, give, uh, that gives the, um, the equation with the, with, the, with the delta is roughly 65%, okay? So in this case, uh, we have the 2D uh, representation of the molecules, and we have see we can see the um, um, the similar parts, the similar atoms in this case. Okay, for for those two pair of uh, uh, of atoms of of molecules, sorry, and we can also see the th the 3D representation. And why uh, did we add the the 3D representation? Because it is very powerful. In this case, we can see um the connections between all of the atoms and in the magenta parts which are the similar parts between uh, those two uh, molecules okay so this is a very powerful uh representation for researchers at, at the lab the uh, the biology people from the from the lab because um uh, uh they can see uh if the uh, structures are um similar enough okay in order to test them in the in the lab so we can see here uh, also some of the of the pairs that are not uh, shown here because the similarity value is uh, below the 50 percent that we said before and uh, we can see also the uh, the representation of this uh, pair of uh, of molecules the foreign inhibitor and the acetyl exapeptide 3 that the model says that roughly 60% uh, of them are similar, but, but uh, we can see in the structure that uh, this structure is uh, very spread. Instead of the like, instead of the first one that uh, was very uh, compact in a compact way. Okay, uh, the thing is that these two molecules maybe they are similar enough uh, in a in a value of similarity, but uh, of course the structures. Uh, uh, do not say that, okay. And more or less the same goes for the furin inhibitor and the thymopentin molecule, uh, uh, because in in this case also uh, we uh, can see just the small structures like this one or or this other one, okay, that are similar enough. Uh, these are the the three pairs of molecules that are similar enough, but uh, maybe the mo the most promising one is this case. So uh, in this case. Uh, since the the structure the structures for the two molecules are similar enough, uh, we would say the the research lab. Uh, okay, maybe uh, you can try the sophosbuvir. Okay, and 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 try if the sophosbuvir is is good enough for uh, fighting COVID nineteen in in humans. Okay. Well, uh, that was the uh, the experiment, and as I said before. Um, uh, this is something that we are uh, going to publish in a in a in a research paper, and the thing is that uh, we have seen that quantum-inspired computing in in the case of molecule comparison uh, is a, a validated approach. In in this case, we can use uh, digital annealer to um, uh, to you to to compare several molecules and and see what happens in the lab. Okay. Uh, this is a uh, part of the work that we presented in the Big Things conference last November uh, with a, a good precision of results uh, uh, because we have we have seen uh, the, which are the, the specific parts that are similar enough in, 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 
in comparing two molecules, okay? And as I have said before, uh, there is a paper in progress detailing all the methodology and, and, and the results, okay? So I think that this is uh, uh, everything that I wanted to, to share with you, uh, that we are working with Digital Annealer, that is a, a quantum-inspired uh, hardware, that we can uh, model optimization problems uh, in the same way as using a quantum annealer. Uh, but uh, but the uh, with the, but the power with a, of of a of a circuit instead of uh, a quantum computer, and we have seen uh, several examples in which we are working with startups, uh, big companies, and and even uh, research labs, as we have seen in the, in this last um, example. So. Uh, I think I'm uh, done with the presentation, so I'm very happy uh, to be here trying to answer your uh, your questions. Thanks. So is there any question here? In the chat, there are some questions. Oh, oh. Okay. Okay. So we use the CPU in non-supervised machine learning on digital manufacturing data. Uh, we have a project. Okay. Um, for Joseph, uh, well, I, I think I will uh, take a look at your project because, uh, of course, it uh, maybe maybe is uh, a very good project. And and the thing is that we have not yet used this uh, digital annealer for um, uh, for machine learning projects, okay? But this is something that we are um, uh, that we are looking for, uh, especially from the research labs at Japan. So maybe uh, maybe we can uh, we can use this uh, digital annealer uh, to solve your problem. Uh, and, and also, is there any comparison cube success according to IonQ and D-Wave? Well, um, uh, we haven't seen a lot of uh, research papers that um, that compares uh, DITCUBO models for digital annealer against uh, the D-Wave uh, or IonQ. But uh, the thing is that I I recently see I recently saw the one paper that compares digital annealer against the wave uh, against a GPU and against a specific um, methodology for solving uh, a problem related to constraint programming. Uh, but I don't remember the results uh, or, or the specific results, but I remember that uh, digital annealer uh, was very well positioned uh, in this comparison, maybe, maybe after the session, I can share with you the um, the paper, this paper that I'm talking about. Okay, that, that's not a problem for me. And uh, Irait, uh, following Joseph's question, were those results compared also against other meta or, or other heuristic methods, simulating an alien you mentioned, to compare the gain on same device? Uh, maybe this uh, paper that I mentioned before uh, goes uh, uh, goes for the for that line, and uh, yes, of course, I will I will share with you uh, this paper because I think it's um, a, a very good paper uh, that that compares a lot of different solutions for the same problem that relies on quantum computing with the wave uh, in in classical computing with a specific software, uh, but also GPUs and digital annealers. So I think it's uh, a very complex um, uh, paper and, and it gives you uh, a lot of information in, in this way. So yeah, of course I will be, um, uh, I will be sharing this with you. Okay, Fernando Carrasco asks, uh, have you used digital annealer for vehicle routing problem? Uh, well, the thing is that we worked before uh, in uh, in, um, in a project 
uh, with a company that um, that delivers uh, some um, drugs, okay, for the pharmacies. And uh, yes, we divided the, the problem in two parts. Uh, the first part was uh, clustering uh, pharmacies, uh, because the, the thing is that pharmacies more or less um, ask the, 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 uh, this company uh, more or less the same products every day or, or more or less the same quantity of products every day. Uh, so uh, what the company wanted uh, was to create um, uh, the same route, okay, uh, for for a lot of days, um, and and that's the thing. So so, uh, what we did uh, was clustering those uh, pharmacies that uh, would be uh, delivered in the same route, okay. And after having uh, those uh, pharmacies that would be delivered in the same route because of the capacity of the of the vehicle. Uh, then we can solve the, the TSP problem, okay, the, the traveling salesperson problem, uh, in order to get the the, the optimal route for uh, for delivering the, the the drugs. This was just an experimental um, uh, use of it here in Spain, but from other parts of the world uh, there are uh, more significant results. For example, we can see. In the Japan Post, like uh, here in Spain, the Correos, uh, uh, but in Japan, uh, what we have seen is that uh, we could minimize uh, the combination of uh, the route, the uh, capacity of the vehicle, and the number of vehicles used to deliver uh, uh, some items. Okay, the the uh, um, the orders. Uh, for several uh, customers. The thing is uh, that in the project, the one, just one, um, uh, just one office uh, reduced the number of vehicles from 52 for, uh, to 49. So uh, that was uh, very impressive, I think, for uh, for a project uh, like this one in, with digital annular. Yes. More questions? Sure. Are you working to mix both worlds to take advantage of the nailer? With um, both worlds, uh, you mean uh, a classical world or a more classical world in the, in the part of the methodology and digital annealer? or mixing digital annealer with a quantum computer? Hi, can you hear me? Ah, yes. Maybe it's better if I <laughs> if I ask the question uh, speaking with you. Oh. No, I was, to, uh, ah, I was asking funny. about mixing uh, reinforcement learning, for oh, example, yeah. and other techniques with the advantages on the, the speed that the digital annealer uh, provides to the users. Okay, uh, I would be very glad of uh, using digital annealer in this kind of um, experiments uh, because reinforcement learning uh, maybe uh, can solve uh, optimization problems in, in like in, in in a more classical way uh, from the methodology part, not not because it's uh, an artificial intelligence method, but the thing is. Um, uh, I would like to 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 be able to to research in in that area, but we are not working currently, at least here from Spain. Uh, maybe my colleagues from Japan uh, are working are working with it, but uh, not here in Spain. Okay, thank you. Any more questions?
Okay, so uh, if there are no more questions, uh, I don't know if uh, we can close the um, the session here or not. Or ah, oh, okay, uh, Sylvia. Uh, Borja? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, sure. Uh, yes, one question. Uh, when do you think it's going to be possible to produce like a quantum, quantum philosophy process like is in the case of digital and e-learning? Um, what do you mean by philosophy? Uh, sorry, can you <laughs> repeat that question? Yes, uh, sorry. Uh, when do you think it's going to be possible to start like pro producing? Uh, okay, okay. Pro uh, yeah, I, I, I get the question. Thanks. Okay. Uh, well, uh, the thing is that um, here in Spain, we are not currently uh, going into production because uh, we are working on several projects and maybe in the near term future we will have uh, some projects that will be uh, on production like the ones with uh, quantum match for example or or maybe in the next collaboration with the bbba uh, bank that i think that uh, it will be possible uh, but around the world there are some uh, other projects that are right now into production with uh, with digital annealer maybe the most advanced one uh, is in America uh, that we started a collaboration with uh, Ford uh, in order to work with uh, vehicle to uh, vehicle to vehicle communication and that kind of things. Uh, the details are uh, not already disclosed, I think, but uh, our collaboration uh, was published uh, during last year in in June, I think, and it is a very interesting project that uh, that will lead to. Uh, to a very, a very impressive project, I think, from, uh, for digital annealer. But yes, the, the idea is to uh, to have these kind of projects into into production, of course. Okay, thank you. And yes. uh, another question: mm -hmm. uh, Which do you think is going to be the economic impact of the digital annealers? at short uh, time, see, I, I mean, next three years. Yeah, that, that's a good question. Uh, the thing is that right now, uh, quantum computers are not ready for solving uh, large optimization problems. And, and the thing is that digital annealer could be of use uh, as a bridge uh, between the classical and the quantum counter counterpart, okay? So maybe, um this is the the time of using digital annealer this is um uh, a tool that we can use uh, as a as a company uh, to test the to test optimization models uh, a cubo a cubo model to uh, to try to solve our optimization problems and i think that digital annealer uh, serves as a as a good step uh, between the, the classical uh, algorithms that we can uh, rely on uh, today in, in, in every computer and, and, and this quantum computing uh, part. So, so maybe digital annealer is right now at the right uh, point, at the, at the right spot in order to, to test it and, and to test um, uh, quantum models that could run in the future in, 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 in quantum computers but that right now uh, are not able to to run between because of uh, of the um, of the of the quantum computers characteristics okay but digital annealer is a is a good step for for trying to solve uh, uh, very hard optimization problems Thank you very much, Borja, for being here and answering all our questions. I was very, I was, it was, it has been very interesting. I don't know if there is any further question. 
Uh, yes, I have another one. Is going to be the session available on the internet? Yes, it is. Yes, on YouTube. We will we will allow this. Yep. Okay, thank you. Great. Absolutely. Well, if there is no more questions, because I have seen that we have asked too much, well, too, that it's fantastic. But if there is no more sessions, I really just say thank you very, very much again to you, Borja. It has been very, very interesting. I hope we, we can see you again. Yeah, sure. Uh, it was a pleasure for me. And thank you very much for, for inviting me to, to this session. And we will talk about further uh, sessions in the future, for sure. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you very much, Borja. See you then. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you very much to everyone to attend. Oye, muchas gracias, eh, Borja. <laughs> no, muchas gracias, muchas gracias. Lo y perdona, eh, que he estado, estaba hablando todo el rato con Silvia. Nada, nada. Perfecto. Una compañera mía. Y no, el, yo, he, yo he estado bastante atento la primera media hora y demás y me ha encantado. ¿eh? Además es que Javi de Kumats también vino las hace un par de semanas, así que la verdad es que genial, genial. De verdad, sí, muchísimas sí, sí. gracias. ¿eh? Lo vi, lo vi y vamos, que, o sea, que vi que, que, que vino. Eh, lo que pasa es que no, no tuve tiempo de, de venir al seminario, pero seguro que estuvo fenomenal porque la verdad es que el tío es un crack. Sí, sí. Así es que nada, bueno. Sí, sí. Pero bueno, pues eh, perdóname, Borja, que no haya estado presente, es lo que te he comentado esta mañana y demás, pero claro, vamos, he visto que ha salido bien y yo creo que la gente ha quedado muy contenta. Así que nada, me alegro muchísimo y nada, estamos en contacto, ¿vale? Muy bien, claro que sí. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, Borja. A ti. Venga, hasta luego. Hasta luego.